please. Hello, yes, please. Uh, this is Lorena. I have a question. Yes, Lorena. Please let's take uh, Sir, please. Uh, last, we're doing ops and gyne, and Dr. Jidu made a mention that when a patient, like a pregnant woman, comes in who is at SC compared to someone who is SS, you would have to pay much attention to the one with the SC. So I would like you to throw more light on the on difference that. between the SS and then the SC and why you would pay more attention to the SC than the SS. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think I think he probably said it in that way because um, just to let you know the gravity of the situation when you are dealing with SC as well. I mean, it's a general notion that SS comes with more severe symptoms, but you could have a patient who is SC who you would just lose in the blink of an eye. Okay. Even Yes, you can have two patients, one SC, one SS, and you. by the time you realize you've lost the patient who is SC. The reason here is that mm. ideally, okay, ideally SS is more severe than SC. So if you have two patients, one SS and one SC, who are undergoing the same form of treatment in quotes and are being managed under the same conditions, you expect that the patient who has the SC will have an upper hand in terms of survival as compared to the patient who has the SS, if they are all okay. exposed to the same conditions. But okay. if you have two patients, one SS, one SC, and the SS is exposed to better condition than the SC, then the SS, which is even more deadlier, becomes less deadlier as compared to the SC who doesn't have proper good conditions you understand okay. so yes so sometimes you are seeing your patients at the antenatal clinic and then you realize that a patient is sc people tend to ignore because they feel this is not ss yeah. so they don't pay close or that much attention to the patient so they ignore and then once you get into labor labor is a stressful condition once you get into labor and you are not properly planned for that labor thinking the patient is SC, so, oh, it's not that bad like SS. Once you get into labor, the patient is going to sickle and you end up losing this patient. So I'm sure that is the reason why he meant pay close attention in pregnancy. It's not because in pregnancy, SC is more severe than SS. However, they are both severe and you don't know where this patient is coming from, whether the patient <coughs> has a properly controlled sickle cell disease or not. So if you don't pay close attention to the SC, you end up losing your patient. Okay, sir. Sir, another yes, question. Sir. You're welcome. Um, sir, there is a patient who came to me. Um, I had a condition some time ago. Um, there, it, it was a young girl around 12 years old. Um, yeah. She had some lumps on the um, ankle going closer to the ankle and feet. Yes, like okay. symptoms of sickle cell. Okay. Upon doing blood, um, the sickle cell cell, we realized she was baby, but she had okay. the liver being enlarged. And and like so what okay. is that condition as well? That can mimic a sickle cell. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Great, great. Um, and that's why it's always good and it's always essential for you to to have differentials, okay? It's always essential for you to have differentials because you could have one of the, the usual questions they used to ask back in the day during exams, especially your internal medicine exams. <laughs> One of the usual questions when we're in school, they used to ask is, you go and you see a patient who has big liver, big spleen, what is it called? Okay, so you say what? Hepatosplenomegaly, good. Then they'll make you feel good. Then afterwards they'll ask you, okay, so what are your differentials for hepatosplenomegaly? Mm -hmm. Then now you have to start listing them. 
And we know sickle cell disease is just one of the many differentials for hepatosplenomegaly. Um, medicine too, we'll do leukemias and then we'll do lymphomas and all that. And you realize that malignancies of the blood cell, okay, so what we call blood cancer or malignancies of the blood cell. So leukemia is a malignancy of the white blood cell can lead to hepatomegaly and splenomegaly at the same time, okay? And that is just one of its ways of mimicking sickle cell disease because of the hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. The other way it mimics sickle cell disease is that because you are going to have excess abnormal or baby white blood cells being produced, this excess abnormal or baby white blood cells would infiltrate the bone marrow. And once it infiltrates the bone marrow, it's going to affect production of other cell lines. So it infiltrates the bone marrow and then affects production of your red blood cells. And in so doing, your HB will be low. So this patient on top of the hepatosplenomegaly would also have anemia. So when you see it, you say, oh, hepatosplenomegaly with anemia. All right, this is likely to be sickle cell. But you do your sickling and your HB electrophoresis, everything will be fine and you get confused. Don't get confused. Once you see that, go back and look at your full blood count again. Look at your white blood cells. Check if your white blood cell is abnormally high. If it is abnormally high, you have a leukemia at your hands. There are other, other conditions as well. You have um, a myelofibrosis, like so many um, myelopoly um, proliferative and myeloproliferative disorders, okay, which means that the myeloid cell line is abnormally producing or proliferating. All this would invade the liver and then the, the spleen. That's how come you end up developing a big liver, big spleen, because the cells which have normally been produced will leave circulation and invade your solid organs like the liver, like the spleen. It becomes huge and then you have hepatomegaly. So those are the differentials that you have, okay? Yeah. And then um, on top of this question, uh, I want to uh, um, throw more light on the condition. Um, yeah. A young girl who developed sharp pain. Okay. Okay. Uh, for rapidly for about two weeks. Okay, the leg. Um, Hello, Nat. Uh, Nat, I don't mean to cut you. Can you be a little bit uh, audible? I'm really struggling to hear your questions. Okay. Um, the girl would have pain, acute pain. Okay, on the left. Yeah. Side, on the right uh, legs, ankle, and you see it rolling with lamps. Um, let me say lamp. And okay. for some time, the girl will be reducing weight. Okay. And then will fall, and then sometimes headache. And the pain okay. will be moving to part of the body. And um, after doing, we, we realized that the full, uh, the blood count or the white blood cell was, as you said, it was plenty, it was yeah. so much. But as a point in time, as we speak, it has stopped and she's perfectly okay now. So, sir, my question is, looking at it, should we look at a condition that it might be cancer or maybe it could be other conditions, looking at the other symptoms? Like the, the, the child. Yes, yes, yes. well, yes. So, so that's what I'm saying, that once you are even saying the white blood cell is very high, that should point you guys to a cancer as well. Because one, um, you could have abnormally raised white blood cell if you have infection or sepsis and all that, or an inflammation. And with these bumps you are talking about and the swelling and all that, someone can say, okay, maybe there's an inflammation. And that's the reason why the white blood cells are going up. But mind you, you said the liver was also big, the spleen times, okay? In cancer, you could have and or some chronic conditions, you could have times where you have a relapse where the patient gets worse. And then you could have at times where you have what we call a remission, where the symptoms would come down a bit. Okay. It is up to you to, you know, you don't have to rest on your laurels and say that, oh, down the child is fine. So there was a reason behind the liver getting bigger and the spleen getting bigger. So you try and then rule out all the possible causes of hepatosplenomegaly. One, it could be an infection. So check the patient for her B, 
screen for her B, screen for her C. Okay, it could be too. She, the patient is too young. I mean, so I don't say chronic liver disease. But as I said, it could be a hematological malignancy. So it could be a lymphoma, it could be a leukemia, it could be any of the myeloproliferative disorders. It could be sickle cell, but then the sickle cell came back negative. So those are your differentials. So it could either be an infection, hematological malignancy. You could have certain infiltrations of certain substances to like what we call amyloidosis. Amyloidosis, amyloids are abnormal proteins and sometimes they infiltrate tissues and then they cause a swelling. So you could have possibly some form of amyloidosis there. Okay, you could have that. This child could also be having a, a connective tissue disease. You could have the child, it's possible that a child has some lupus or something. Okay, so those, are, those should be your differentials. So either as an infection or a malignancy or maybe an inflammation secondary to some infiltration like amyloidosis or maybe is a, um, a connective tissue disease. Those are like the usual differentials for hepatosplenomegaly. So what you do is um, do a um, peripheral blood film comment, not just the full blood count. So remember when we were doing anemia, we said you sometimes do a blood film comment. So do a blood film comment. The blood film comment will tell you the types of WBCs that you have in circulation. If there are a lot of abnormal or baby WBCs in circulation, what we call myeloblasts, then you have your diagnosis there and there. If there you have so an abnormal, a, we did the film comment, and the okay. baby white blood cells were so much. Okay, so but what, what were they? Were they matured white blood cells or they were no, baby white no, blood they cells? Were not, they were baby you you said you said baby white blood. Yeah, so that's yes. that's a cancer. That's a cancer yeah. there and then. That's a cancer. And so. What, yeah. What was done was that um, as we speak, sir, for about six months now, there's no reoccurrence now. What I did uh -huh. was because he has been, she has been given a lot of medication, antibiotic, a lot of things. We yeah. did hepatitis C, it was ruled okay. out. Hepatitis okay. B, it was ruled out. So what I did okay. was I just placed her on um, uh, healthy vegetables and then uh, vitamins. Like um, okay, green and then okay. cauliflower and other stuff. And after, yeah. like, from one month after we did all these tests and realized, you know, and I placed on these vegetables on the cruciferous vegetable therapy. So we realized that yeah. there was a lot of improvement. And as we okay. speak, it's been six to eight months now. We always make sure there is a uh, folate available for her. Good. Okay. Not the folate as itself. The folate itself. Okay. Add omega three and quarterly oil. That one. All right. Okay. So it's about eight okay. to nine months now. She's now actively yeah. playing with kids and going up and down without even getting tired. So okay. I think we will have to just go back and then we because I am I've always yeah. been on the lookout because I've good, also suspected good, good. So, so that's that's the most important thing. So just be on the lookout. It could be a cancer that you guys have been able to push into remission using some of the medications that you've given. It could be that you guys have caused some sort of remission, but be on the lookout because you could always have a relapse and relapses are worse than the first. You could have a very bad relapse. So just be on the lookout and try as much as possible to be doing frequent reviews. Okay, so at least if a child can come to you at... I mean, maximum, uh, the child shouldn't go past, you know, three months. Child should come to you for a review, do basic things like full blood count and just check the UBC count, okay? If you realize that it's getting abnormally high, request for a peripheral blood film comment and then possibly a bone marrow aspiration for comments as well so that you, you know what is happening in the bone marrow, okay? And once we do cancers, we'll, we'll get to that. So. This tells us that, yes, hepatosplenomegaly, you should be thinking sickle cell, but you should also have other differentials. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank I'll you, take, sir. welcome. I'll take the other question. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, Doc. Yes. Hello. Yes. Um, please, yes. because of the um, the differential diagnosis, when you are requesting for labs, are you going yeah. to Hello, add doctor. more... Uh, more, are you going to request more labs because you want to do other conditions? Out, all right, okay. So, yes, yeah, so 
what we do is ideally if you find yourself in an environment where <laughs> you know that and that's how ghana is beginning to tend to now thanks to private health insurances and all that if you put a diagnosis there and you're thinking about another illness and you put another diagnosis there to rule out they would pay for it once you have access to that or you have a patient who is willing to pay it's not enough to just request for labs just to find out you have to try and rule out other things okay in a case of sickle cell once you are thinking about sickle cell there are some basic labs that you have to run for me i would go for four main labs i'll do a full blood count for the patient right i'll do a sickling test and then i'll go ahead and do hb electrophoresis for the patient Okay, sometimes I'll just leave the cycling test out because the most important thing is the HB electrophoresis because that, that will tell me if this patient has AA, this patient has AS, this patient has SS, SC, CC. I'm saying that don't ever do a cycling test without doing HB electrophoresis because you could have a patient who is CC. You do a cycling test and then they'll tell you cycling is negative. Cycling only picks up S. A patient who is CC will be sickling negative, but yes, they will show the same symptoms as a patient who is SC and SS. So for me, I'll do a full blood count. I'll do my sickling test. I'll do electrophoresis for the patient. And then possibly I'll do a peripheral blood from comment. I want to satisfy my curiosity and I want to know what is happening to the blood film. So once all these four investigations come there and then if the patient is sickle cell, it will, it will tell you if the patient is not sickle cell and is negative, your blood film comment and your full blood count will point you into the direction of where the case is coming from. But if you find yourself in an area where, you know, issue with cash and all that, you go ahead and then you just do your um, HB electrophoresis and then a full blood count because you are, at that point you are thinking of sickle cell. But when it comes and NHB electrophoresis tells you it's AA, then it means you still have to convince the patient to get money to do a peripheral blood film comment. Okay. Are we okay, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All I'm right, okay. Yes. Yes, 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 please. Sir. Uh, yeah, good uh, Evans, ask your question and then Esther and then Christina will follow. So, Evans, ask your question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, actually, my question was oh, actually C. My on the hemoglobin C. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as, 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 as you said, as you said, you always yeah. do the, 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 the test and it will as, come as, out as negative. Said, as, in, as you said, you always do the, 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 the test and it will come out negative. As in, but, but we always call the C to be normal. And I don't really understand. We once had an argument on it. And okay. Yes. They are saying the C is this abnormal. But you know, you do the test and it will always come out negative. So I don't okay. I don't I don't, I don't really get it and it's negative. If you can right, really okay. help me to clear my doubt, yes. Okay, okay. Even so that's that's a good one. So the sickle cell test that we do, the sickling test. It's what we call the sickle solubility test. So if you check the investigations list on page 12, um, slide 12, you see sickle solubility test with sodium detainate. It is used to pick up the S gene. It's not used to pick up the C. Okay, so when you do only that test, it will tell you that all other things are normal, except when you have a sickling, except when you have S around. If you don't have S around, it will tell you it's normal. And that's why I was saying that it's not enough to just go ahead and do only a cycling test because then if there's a C, this sodium detainee test would miss it, okay? And it will, it will tell you that it's normal. But we all know that C is also a mutation. So the only way that you can know that there's another abnormality there apart from the fact that it's telling you, oh, there's no S, so it's fine. There's another abnormality there is to go ahead and do your electrophoresis. And your electrophoresis is going to give you a true picture of what is happening there. Okay, so the C is, is abnormal. We should take it that way. Yes, the C is abnormal. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
okay, it's abnormal. So, so when you have when you have a patient who has one C, the patient is a carrier, just like a patient who has one S. Oh, okay. And when you have a, okay. yes. So pay, the only normal we we'll say are not carriers are people, who, patients. Who, I mean, are people who who are AA. But AS AC is a carrier state. Okay. Okay, so just keep that, yeah. So, so if in compatibility testing, people who are getting married or something, if, uh -huh. both, uh, if both partners are having ACAC, you don't advise them to? Yes, ahead. there's a possibility that even though it's rare, they can have a baby who is CC. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Christiana, I Hello, saw your, your hand up, but Esther, ask your question then. If Christiana still has a um, follow, so Esther, go Doc, ahead. please. My question, my question is: If you are in the consulting room and a patient yeah. comes, all the signs you are seeing, the patient doesn't have it, but the patient yeah. is limping. The patients have gone ahead to develop a complication of sickle cell is, is limping, but because the yeah. patient is not attending any sickle cell clinic, he or she is not aware, or the parents are not aware. Yeah. As a PA, what do you do? And then okay. my second question too is, I know there's a, when you do some of the tests, one test test, you, you see SF, normally with the children. Okay, and I learned okay, with okay, some, okay, yes, okay, okay, okay. it's supposed to go okay. off. Are but we... some adults, it doesn't go off. That one too, what do you do about it? Thank you. All right, okay. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so that's a very, very good question as well. So, um. The very first one, it will depend on what the patient is coming to you with in the consulting room in the first place. If you have um, a patient who is limping, one of the complications of sickle cell is avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. Okay, so you know where the femur is and the head. And because there's poor blood flow, vasoclusive crisis, all that, there's poor blood flow, and then it becomes, you develop some form of ischemia infection, and then there's a necrosis. So... This will heal, but then the patients will have a limp. Um, when they come to you, ideally, we always say that it's always good to watch your patient's gait when they come in. So you have lots of differentials. If a patient comes to sit in front of you and this patient doesn't have any symptoms relating to sickle cell at all, the patient is not coming with anything like fever, joint pains, the patient is not coming with anything which is pointing to um hyperhemolytic crisis patient is not coming to you coming to tell you I, I have breathlessness i have anemia i have body pains it makes it very difficult for you to even think along that line so as part of your history you you ask oh have you been involved in any accident i mean when did this happen when did you start developing the limp and all that okay so you can only pick up sickle cell and investigate for sickle cell along the lines of history. If your patient didn't come in with a classic symptom of sickle cell, that is the anemia symptoms, because the anemia symptoms and the bone pain symptoms that will cause you to go and check. Either a patient is just coming with a limp and tells you that, oh, I was fine. And then sometime ago, I had severe pain at this point. And then after I developed the severe pain with time, I realized that I was moving this way. There was no preceding history of trauma. I didn't fall. I wasn't involved in any accidents. It should tell you that, oh, okay, patience was fine. Severe pain. Severe pain means poor blood flow. So there's a possibility that the patient develops some ischemia along the line. So this could be sickle cell. Then you go back and ask further history. So when you were sick, when you were young, did you used to fall sick more? Have you had times where you realize your urine is very dark? Have you had times where you realize your eye is very yellow? It is only along those lines that you can actually elicit or pick up. But if you don't, and if the patient tells you, oh, I fell some time back. Meanwhile, the fall is not even related to the, the limping. You will be misguided and then you won't test for it. So it's all about the history. Okay. Very, very, very important. So that's the only way you can find out and relate the limping to other, um, you know, symptoms of sickle cell. Then you go ahead to test and you find it. Um, are you okay with the first question? Yes, Doc. Yes, yes. And the second one, yes, you are right. So we have what we call fetal hemoglobin. And fetal hemoglobin 
it's not like adult hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin, they don't have the beta globulin chain. So they are usually not affected by the whole cycling feature. So if you have, and that's the reason why a child who is born to have sickle cell would usually not show any symptoms at all until they are getting to about one year, one year, six months. Because usually when you give birth to the child, at that neonatal stage, the, what the hemoglobin the child has is the fetal hemoglobin, what we call the HBF. Okay, so the HBF doesn't have alpha chain and then beta globulin chain. It has like its own combinations. So at that point, um, at that point in time, you would have um, the child or the, should I say the neonate, okay, throughout to the infancy stage. And then this baby would basically not have any um, symptom of sickle cell at all because of the presence of this fetal hemoglobin or this HBF. So the HBF usually when, like the way the adult HBA, you have two alpha chains, two beta chains, okay? The HBF, you have two alpha chains and then two gamma chains. And we are saying sickle cell is a condition of the beta globulin chain. This child or this, well, not a child here because you have to go past one year. So this infant, when the, I mean, once the newness is born throughout infancy, so like maybe one year, one year, six months, has two alpha chains and then two gamma chains, the child will show no symptoms. So when they come and then you test, you won't find anything. You won't find when you do HB electrophoresis, you are only going to find HBF. That tells you that wait for some time and then repeat the test. It is not common in adulthood. If you have an adult who has HBF, then it means the adult is probably on some medication. And we'll be talking about that in our management. There's a medication called hydroxyurea. And what it does, the hydroxyurea does is that it causes you to make a lot of fetal hemoglobin or baby hemoglobin, HBF, because we know that HBF doesn't contain beta chain. So it can be affected by a sickle cell. So you have a patient who has sickle cell, but because you are giving hydroxyurea, they are making a lot of HBF. And so they don't sickle and they don't show any symptoms at all. But ideally, once you go past one year, six months, you lose all the fetal hemoglobin. And then at that point, when we test and you have... Last question and then we'll, we'll go on. Yeah, Christiana. Yeah. Christiana, you had a question, so ask your question. Fred, hold on. Yeah, Doc, uh, please. Uh, is it true that those who have AS, the carriers, they have some form of protection against malaria? All right, okay, yes. Yeah, so that's a good question too. So yes, it's true. They have some form of protection against malaria and then basically when you go down into genetics and mutations and all that, the reason why um, when you, if you travel outside West Africa, um, and you travel go past sub-Saharan Africa, malaria is not common. Okay, and malaria is not common. And at the same time, your usual sickle cell we tend to find here is also not common. So there's actually a relation. Malaria is common here, and sickle cell mutation is also common here. And the reason, of course, you know we have more AS people than more SS people and SC people. The reason is that because of how bad malaria used to kill people as a human being, the genes usually tend to mutate to give you some sort of protection or cover against malaria. Um, you know, the basis here is that once you have A and you have S, malaria parasite comes in. The parasite finds it very, very difficult to parasitize the, the S. Okay, they, they go in for the A, but then the S at that point gives you some sort of protection. It's not always the case for people who have AMSS though, because people who have SS tend to get malaria just like people who have AA. But people who have AS, because I mean, malaria parasite gets in, people say, well, the parasite gets confused because they're getting and then they, they see the S and they see the A at the same time. And what's happening is that when they go in, they have a more predilection to the normal red blood cells. So at that point where they are destroying the normal red blood cell, your sickling cell 
over there is holding you down. And then it gives you time enough to treat your malaria so you don't end up getting severe malaria. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're oh. welcome. Doc. Yeah. Yes. Hello, uh, sir. Fred, please hold on. That looks like this session has been for questions. There's one more question from Fred. Yes, yes I'll take it and then we'll okay. just finish the last part with another session. Right. That's okay. So, Fred, okay. go ahead. Okay. Okay, sir. Good Sunday, David. Please, sir. Uh, yes, this thank in you. The asymptomatic carrier state for the uh, HB or the HBA. What could explain that a, 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 the asymptomatic? Could it be that there's failure to switch from feeder to adult hemoglobin? Could it be that possibility? He said asymptomatic carrier for what? I'm done, so, so if you say asymptomatic the carrier, then it, it means it means the patient is AS. No, I'm talking about the slides. You said A B A G. Where slide number? Slide. You mean slide about, number six? About, yes. Yes. Slide please, number about six. The types. So slide number yes. six, yes. I said asymptomatic or carrier state. It's HBAS. Okay, okay. AS. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh -huh. AS. Yes, yes, yes. So I was asking whether is it because there's no switching from feta to uh, adult oh, state? No, there's no. To switch. That's why the the okay, okay, okay. Showing. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, it's not about failure to switch. The thing is that the reason why you have AS is, 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 is that you have one, you are taking one from each of the parents. So one parent is bringing the A, the other parent mm -hmm. is bringing the S. Okay, one parent is bringing the A, the other parent is bringing the S. But at the fetal stage, you won't be able to get the, the usual adult hemoglobin. So it starts, you know, you start with two alpha chains and then two beta chains, okay? And two alpha chains and two gamma chains. And that's what we call HBF. Okay. But once they pass the fetal okay. stage, then okay. we expect that in the normal person, you are now going to have two alpha chains and then what, two beta chains instead of two gamma chains, which is found in the fetuses. So it will switch. And because it switches, that is the reason why you are able to get the S over there. Because if it doesn't switch, then it means when you test for it, you even see the S in the first place. So it will switch from fetal to adult hemoglobin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. My dog. All right. Yes, My let's dog. Go. It's not yes, everyone please. that switches, though, because I have some patients who are still SF. That's why I asked who, who are still SF. And they are not on any medications yes. at all. And they are in excess. And now okay. they've been moved from the children's um, department to the adult sickle cell. That's why I asked All right. Question. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And then also, if okay. you are PA, uh, okay. with what you okay. just said, okay. and also, with what you just said about what Fred asked, if you are in the consulting room and then you, you have a patient, the patient is SC, the father is AA, the mother is AS, but the patient is SC. But you know, <laughs> there's no way that the patient is going to have that um, a, a, a genotype. How do yeah. you go about your counseling here? How do you handle it? Do you let the man go out or you lie to the man? What do you do? Oh, one well, pass well, well. <laughs> the woman has passed somewhere. The woman is smart. So. Okay. Okay. So you have to go to court. <laughs> yeah. So so I've 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 come across such an issue before, and um, it becomes. It becomes very difficult when you are you are sitting in a chair 
to be the one going to break somebody's marriage. So what you do at that point is that you just have to explain to them that, oh, your child is this. You mentioned the child's genotype. You know, and then you tell them that, so now your child has, um, your child is SC, but then you know that amongst them, you don't have, um, how do you call it? You don't have anybody with a C gene there at that point. But you, you don't make it so obvious. You don't say it. You just tell them what is obvious. What is obvious now is that your child has a, um, a sickle cell, has SC. So we'll have to manage your child as such. If at that point, the man knows a lot about sickle cell and he knows his genotype and is red, because when you read, it's easy. And then he goes ahead and questions that, oh, why is it so? If none of us have the C gene, why does the child have the C gene? Then you have to tell them that, okay, so what we'll do is, I will need you to repeat the labs elsewhere so that we compare. So you do a, more of an international standardized lab. If it, I mean, all of them, so all the three of them would basically have to go and check their genotypes and come. Because for all you know, in the, the case I was dealing with, in the end, the woman didn't cheat. It was because one of them had forgotten, um, you know, the genotype and said that, oh, he's rather this. But then in actual fact, he was this. So I got all the three of them to go and repeat their genotypes. It came back and then you realize that, yes, the first result we got for the baby was true, SE and SC, but then the baby picked up the C from the father. All along, the father was thinking he was AA because I'm sure the father probably did, um, how do you call it? The sickling test, but they didn't do HB electrophoresis. Okay, so they just did a sickling test and they said sickling negative. So the father went ahead to think that he's AA. So there are so many of us walking around who think that we are AA, but when we go and do HB electrophoresis, we'd rather be AC. So because the father was thinking it was AA and then the mother was AS, they weren't even expecting that the child would even have sickle cell in the first place. This child came and then the child had SC. Father repeated and then we realized that father was AC. So let all the three of them, if you find yourself in that situation, let all the three of them go and repeat the genotype. And if it doesn't match, you have to say it as it is, that this is what we have here, but it's not matching. So 